welcome to the broadcast. We are continuing our series titled Jesus First, Then Others, Then Ourselves. Taking from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 30 to 37. Let's open our Bibles, and I'll begin reading at verse 30. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. May God have the blessing to the hearers of his red word. Then others. We talking about others. In our first two presentations of this series, we talked about Jesus first. And we hope you got a clear understanding that Jesus should be priority one in every one of our lives. We ought to do all we can to please him, the one who saved us, the one that brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. But why our message is twofold today, because when we deal with others, we chose this passage of scripture because Jesus teaching us all something here, all humanity. And that is, we are always should be concerned about others. In this story, we didn't read the early portion where in verse 25 of Luke 10, where there was a certain lawyer who tried to test Jesus by asking or throwing out this question. And he threw out the question to Jesus, uh, trying to test him or get him off guard. And the question was, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus threw a question back at him. He said, he said to the lawyer with the question, what is it written in the law? What is the reading of it? In other words, you know what the Bible say. What does it say? So the lawyer responded to Jesus, praise God, and said, you should love the Lord with all your God, heart, God with all your heart. Uh, all your soul and all your strength and your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, Jesus responded to the lawyer, well, 
You you answer that right. All you got to do now is go do this and you'll live. But that lawyer wasn't happy with that answer. Why? Because he was trying to test Jesus. So he then, after Jesus said, loving God first and then love your neighbor as yourself, he wanted to justify himself according to verse 29. Look at it. He said to Jesus, he threw this question at Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Oh boy. And and Jesus answers that for us in this parable of the Good Samaritan. And that's why I say here, we want to start publicly. Publicly. What I mean publicly. Out in the public, it's made up of people. I want y'all to understand me this morning. Wake up now. Listen. People. People. There are two things that will always exist. First, God's word. God's word going to always be because the scripture said before his word will fail in any point. Heaven and earth will pass away. They're always going to be God's word. It's the road map, praise God, to, to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. The word is life. Hallelujah. And that's why some of you not living because you're not in the word. And then another thing that's always going to exist according to the scriptures, the word, and that is people. Now, you can do the breakdown. I ain't got time to waste talking about ethnic groups, who's on what side of the track, who is uh, Hispanic or African-American or Caucasian or a people. It make no difference. In the public, in this, the point Jesus was making, people are people. They are human beings. And I don't know when we're going to wake up to that, that people are people. And I love the way God do things, just like in his creation. Did you pay any attention when you went out yesterday or the other day and looked at nature and looked at Praise God, while we still in the last few days of summer, all the greenery. And did you pay any attention to the trees? All the trees ain't the same. All the trees ain't got the same structure. All the trees ain't even totally green. There's all kind of trees. Some got blooms, some don't. Some got different kind of leaves. Oh, my shapes and forms. Well, just like there's all kind of trees, and I like by God's nature, we make flowers. He didn't make them all blue. He didn't make them all yellow. There's all kind of colors. And I love when you, you go to a good florist and they... They bring somebody put together a beautiful bouquet. And all the beauty of it is all the colors. The different colors and how they just, oh my, it just put a smile on your face, doesn't it? Well, we're talking about people. And I wish we as adults especially uh, understand, like the little children do, that people are People, the little children, they just play. And, and really, they have to be taught to be prejudiced. Because children, amongst children, are playing get along. Hallelujah. That's why when the disciples was disputing among themselves who was the greatest, Jesus brought a child and put the child in the midst and said, unless you become as this child. What point you're making this morning? Well, I'm glad you asked. People are people. So in this, 
and I'm addressing the public first. When we're talking about others, Jesus is saying to every one of us who is a human being that fall under this category that you are a person and you are part of uh, a person of the people population. Let me say it that way. If you one of them peoples or a person, then the Lord is saying in this parable, everybody out there is your neighbor. That's right. And when we're talking about others, let me define others. That's everybody else excluding you. <laughs> That's right. Everybody else excluding you is others. So what is he saying? Here Jesus take this story, dealing with some Jews and a Samaritan who was enemies. Oh, the Samaritan was enemies to the Jews. They had a strong hate toward one another. You can see in the scriptures that even where in, in, in Luke, praise God, and actually, actually in John chapter 4, where Jesus makes this statement that I must needs go to Samaria. And, and, and why was that said? Because any Jew in that time, they would avoid going through Samaria. They'll go the long way around because they had such ill feelings toward one another. But Jesus said, no, I'm going this day because he had a divine appointment with a Samaritan woman to win her to Christ. So in this story, Luke 10, Jesus said a Samaritan after a Levi and a priest who was Jewish saw this man that had been taken among thieves, beaten and left for dead. And the Levi and the priest his Jewish brothers, saw him, looked upon him, but didn't show no compassion to help him. Oh my. But then, oh hallelujah, here comes a Samaritan, that's right, an enemy, a stranger. And the scriptures say, when he saw him, look at it, verse 33. When he saw him, he had compassion. He had compassion. He showed mercy. He was concerned with others. Let me ask you this. Have you seen in the weekend someone had a flat tire on the side of the road screen? Have you stopped or then... Maybe because you saw the color and you you kept hitting the gas. You saw that mother having a time with her kids going into the supermarket. And, and you didn't mind to just push the cart while she tried to see with the little toddler or help her get her groceries in the car. Or, or maybe because you saw they wasn't the same race you was. Uh-oh. See, that, that's, you, you're not doing as Jesus said, him first, then others. See, the others cover a, a wide range. So this Samaritan, what did he do? He, he not only met the man uh, and got off his beast, tended to his wounds, put him on his beast, that's right, his animal, took him down, oh my, to the high regency, to the best hotel, and told the innkeeper, put it all on my charge, and, and I'm going to give you some money, and then if anything else he need while I'm gone, just put it on my tab. I'll take care of it when I get back. Wow. He showed mercy. 
And here Jesus concludes this story in verse 36. Throwing the question back to the lawyer. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among thieves? Was it the Jew? Hmm? The Levi? Was it the priest? Or was it the good Samaritan? Well, the lawyer said in responding to Jesus' question, he said, he who showed mercy on him, speaking of the Samaritan. And Jesus, did you know what Jesus said? Look at it, verse 37 in your Bible, Luke 10. Jesus said, go and do likewise. See, that's to the general public, to all of us. Everybody's our neighbor. I ain't talking about that one next door to you. Come on. Your co-worker at the job is your neighbor. Amen. That stranger you met at the post office, that's your neighbor. When you go traveling into another state, that's your neighbor. What is he saying? I want you to love others. I want you to show compassion to others, to the general public. Let's move on. I hope you received that today. Now, let's, let's go into Jesus has something to specifically say to us believers. That's right. I'm talking to believers. Let's go to the gospel, uh, well, the book of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 15. And, and let me read verse 1 to 7. We then who are strong ought to bear the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. For whatever things was written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now, the point I want to emphasize here and explain to you, here Paul writes to the church in Rome to make them aware that we ought to be concerned about others, other believers. Now this is targeted to believers because if you don't know Jesus as your personal savior, you can't do this. You can't do this. Do what? Well, I'm glad you asked because what he's trying to get us to understand that the Christian love, we as believers, it's not selfish. He's showing us in this passage that we should seek to share with others and make others happy. We who are strong we got to be willing to carry the younger believers to keep them in their spiritual development. And I think so many times we forget this. We who have matured in Christ Jesus, we forget about the new converts, the new believers who just came on board. Do you recall we made mistakes? Huh? Just as young parents make sacrifices for their children, this passage is teaching us 
that we who are mature in Christ Jesus, we are to make sacrifices to help the younger Christians grow in the faith. And, and I don't see much of that going on today. I recall when I was coming up young in the faith, we had them old saints. They practiced this. They put it in, in, in practice of, of being an example to us, helping us in our little mishaps and what have you. But now everybody want to be little children. Nobody want to be the mature adult in Christ Jesus. See, a spiritual, a person's spiritual maturity is revealed by his or her discernment. That's right, the decisions you make. You ain't got to talk about where you at. I know by seeing the decisions you make on a day-to-day basis. Think about it. Now, look at verse 1 where he says, we ought to bear the scruples of the weak. Now, some of your translations may say the infirmities of the weak. And what he's trying to get us to understand here, talking to believers now, that we should be able to help those who are very sensitive about things. And this usually new people in the faith. See, what he's saying when we see the words scruples, let me define that. It's to be considerate of those who are sensitive about things. And it could be, it could be hair, it could be dress. Uh, I heard just recently someone new in the faith um, had a problem with the hats, okay? Uh, whether they should come in the church with a hat or not, or if I ain't wearing a hat, some of them look at them cross-eyed. Again, we're talking about believers. So here uh, Paul writes and says, wait a minute now. The important thing, they are a believer in Christ Jesus. We have all been redeemed by Jesus Christ, who washed and made us whole, and filled us with his spirit, now we are all children of God. Now, how in the world I'm new in faith, and you're going to be so tough on me about little things? You know, I'm learning that. It's some things I'm, I'm, I'm getting over. I don't know about you, but I'm getting over. I'm getting over when I see people who say they believe us, and they got green hair, blue hair, tinted this color, uh, whatever color that Crayola got. That that's okay. That's that's not a thing to even be stumbling over. You know, it it's just I myself now. I'm not gonna show up on the broadcast with with orange hair. That's just me. I'm not gonna do that. My, my just me as a person won't allow me to do that. I'm not coming here doing Christmas time with red hair. I'm just that's just not me. But here Paul saying, if they send their believer and they're born again and they want to tint their hair blue and it don't bother them, don't let me be so hard on them. Oh, I know some of y'all don't agree. Read your Bible. Did Paul saying, we that are mature in Christ Jesus, we that are, are, are strong in the Lord, and Paul here in this passage include himself as one of those that were strong, one of the mature believers. So he said, man, we, he included himself. Look at verse 1 of 15 of Romans. We then who are strong are to bear with the scruples, the infirmities of the weak believers, and not to please ourselves. Let me help you here. Wait a minute. You ain't God. You ain't Jesus. 
So, so why are you trying to make them please you when they're supposed to be pleasing Jesus? Then we say Jesus first, then others. So I'm glad they're believing and I'm trying to be a help, trying to push them on, encourage them not to be a burden to them. So Jesus, here Paul said, let, verse 2, let each of us please his neighbor for his good leading to edification. In other words, to build them up, not tear them down. Okay? So then he, don't miss this verse, verse 3. And some of you need to highlight this one. He said, for even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. Did you, did you say Jesus didn't even please himself? And that's, that's validated. That's confirmed in the Gospel of John, where constantly woven through the pages of the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I come not to do my will, but the will of my Father who sent me. Oh, hallelujah. In this passage, Paul is trying to get us to see that we have two sources that are given to us. The spiritual power from which we must draw if we are to live to please others. And I think we need to hear this. Source number one, he says, is in verse four. It is the word of God. The word of God can give us, look what it say there, hope and encouragement that we need. So let's get in the word and stay there to Jesus come. So there it is in first verse four, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. There it is. Then the other source that we need, he says is in verse five and six. And that is, praise God, prayer. Look what he said in verse 5 and 6. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you'll read on in the passage, you see where it was Paul that prayed for him. And prayer will make a difference. That's what the young believer needs. The new one in Christ needs. They need our prayers. Because the enemy is out of sift them like we. They need our encouragement. And let's don't be so down on them. Pull them aside and Give them some encouraging words. And guess what? You know what you help them most of all? You being a pattern of good words. See, I, I'm, I believe why so many young new converts or new believers fail or uh, get so sidetracked and go the wrong path because they see so many of us going down the wrong road. They watching and seeing what we do. But if we will publicly love all and see others, and as believers, look out for one another, God will richly bless us all and he will continue to add to his kingdom. So let us love Jesus. Let's it's Jesus first, then others, then ourselves. And until next time, may God richly bless you all and remember to give thanks.